Hello and a very good evening our double impactors out there. My name is Erina and I hope 2022 is going well with you so far. Thank you for watching Double Impact every Tuesday here on REST TV. As you're aware, it's been two years of our children staying at home. And finally, our prayers have been answered. The education system has opened up. Some children reported yesterday, others today, and the entire week. So parents are busy paying school fees, preparing their children physically, mentally, and psychologically. So we wish all of you well. We wish our students well, the teachers and the parents. And we know that this term, with God, all things are possible. So last week, Doreen finalized our Kenya tour, where we brought you stories of Heidi and Christine, who are making such a huge impact. We are happy to be back home and super excited to bring for you even more stories from the Pearl of Africa. Tonight, we bring you another double impactor, as we like to call them. She has such a heart and reaches out in a very unique way. She came all the way from the USA on a mission trip. But little did she know that God was calling her to make a difference here in Uganda. Ladies and gentlemen, Mashauna Rogers, founder of MAMO. Did you hear that? MAMO, as in N-A-M-O. And before we find out who she is and what she does, let's do what we do best. Let's look around. My name is Marshana Rogers, and I'm the co-founder of Medical Assistance and Missional Outreach. It's an organization focused on helping provide medical support to children in rural Uganda through partnerships with, with na national pastors. And it started in 2016 with a visit to Uganda as part of a Pennies for Post Show and Fellowship of Christian Athletes team. I came really as a team mom. I would had a dream to be a missionary nurse in Africa from the time I was a child, but God closed the door for me to do that. So I worked doing other things. I have, a, I have eight children. I finished my nursing degree, but then I put my license on hold so that I could focus on raising my family. And someone who knew of my desire to be a missionary nurse and go to Africa had an opportunity. They were coming with Pennies for Post Show in 2016 and invited me to come. Oh wow, isn't that interesting? So tell us, Mashana, for someone who has always wanted to do missionary work in Africa, what was going through your mind now that you are finally going, not just to Africa, but to Uganda, the Pearl of Africa? I had no idea what God was going to do with that trip. The first day, we went to a school and a little girl about the age of my youngest daughter climbed onto my lap and a little while later started throwing up and I, 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 I'm a nurse, I have eight kids, I know how to handle throw up but I didn't know what to do. One of the teachers came and scooped her out of my lap and took her back into the, behind the church just in the grass to throw up because it was better to throw up there than other places. And then the pastor came and took her to their sick room and I, um, I didn't really think about it to be honest until he came back and asked me to pray for her. And I went and I put my, I went into the sick room and she was laying on a, on a scarf in a room about the size of an American bathroom. And I looked down at her and I put my hand on her face and she was so hot, she was so hot. And her eyes were just glassy with fever. And I thought if this was my little girl and I didn't have medicine, I'd want somebody to help her. So 
I was like, I gotta figure out something that we can do. But we came prepared to help take care of athletes, sprains and strains and that kind of thing, not children. We didn't have any children's medicine. We found a, a pillow pack of Tylenol and calculated that about a half a tablet would be an appropriate dose for her. So we gave her a half a tablet and I prayed for her. And about half an hour later, she came out and found me. She was feeling much better, much better. And I thought, I don't want to get stuck without medicine for children again. So when we came back into Ginger, we went to a pharmacy and I bought some, some children's pain reliever and fever reducer. And then we got, actually it was Divine Cornerstone. We got to Divine Cornerstone School and there was a little boy who was running a fever. So I asked the pastor if we could give the little boy some medicine and he said yes. So I gave him some medicine and he slept for a couple of hours in the arms of an American. And he woke up and he was a happy, cheerful little boy. He was obviously feeling much better. And when it was time for us to leave, the, they had to pry him out of the arms of the American who'd been holding him. And he was crying and I just broke my heart. There were so many other children at that school who were sick and there was a teacher who had an abscess in her neck and they asked me if I could help and I couldn't. And they said, well, can you do anything? And I said, maybe we can leave some medicine. So we left ibuprofen and dressing supplies. And I got on the bus and I just cried because I was so bro heartbroken. I mean, I'm a mom, so seeing sick children broke my heart anyway. And then realizing that the, the teachers and the pastors at the schools, they had the same heart that I did. They wanted to take care of the children who were at their schools, but they didn't have the means. And uh, I didn't have any idea how hard that would be. So I was crying and uh, more than crying. <laughs> and I was talking to the pastor who's a, a spiritual mentor for me. And I said, I didn't know it was gonna be this hard. He looked at me and said, you knew this was gonna be hard. And I said, yes, but I didn't know it was gonna be like this. I didn't know that God was gonna break my heart over the, the this broken system for healthcare in Uganda. And he said, well, you have two choices because we have seven more schools to visit. So you can either muscle through and, and just get through the, the trip or you can ask God what it is that he wants to do with the brokenness in your heart. I can only imagine what you are going through. We live here. We have grown up seeing that brokenness and we still get overwhelmed. So, what did you choose from the options pastor gave you? So I prayed and I asked God what he wanted me to do and got the idea of delivering medical supplies to all the schools. So getting some pain reliever and fever reducer, getting some basic dressing supplies, uh, spirits, the hydrogen peroxide, some antibiotic ointment, and antifungal cream. And asked everybody on the bus who was traveling with me if they'd help. People pitched in money and we were able to buy so just basic, a little bit for each school. And then while we were waiting, um, one of the gentlemen who took me to the pharmacy, Gita David, he said, you know what I see? I see the beginning of a new ministry. And I thought, uh, no. <laughs> but I realized after we got back and we packed everything together and we had these bags to deliver to the, the pastors, I know how I know how the things work, and when you have a lot of kids, medicine doesn't last very long. And so the next day, I was asking what I could do because I knew the medicine wouldn't last very long. What could we do for helping to continue the support? Could I just send money? And they said, No, you can't just send money. That wouldn't work. Like, what can I do? What can I do? So I prayed. I know that feeling. God has a way of making your heart restless when he's sending you to do something that's going to change many lives for his glory. Guys, do you ever get these moments? Get in touch with us and let us know how it was for you. Tell us, Mama Shana, I want to know how you processed this. So I, um, and we were driving actually on our way to see um, Pastor Peter in Budiba and it was a longer drive. As we were talking, I was talking to Dalton and Gita David and asking questions and processing and thinking, what could we do? Well, maybe we could bring a team back. And the whole bus was involved in the conversation. And somebody said, you need to start a ministry. 
you need this needs to be you need to do something with this and before we get deeper tell us about mamo what does mamo mean and where did it come from marshana is my name but it sounds very similar to marsana <laughs> which means four eyes <laughs> so i was wondering i'd say my name and people would look at me funny and i didn't understand why so somebody gave me a nickname mamo because I thought, yeah, anyway, um, I was the team mom, and they said, you should use MAMO. MAMO should be the acronym. And we were driving on the bus talking, and, well, what's the name going to be? Well, medical assistance and missionary outpost, or missionary organization. I was like, no, we don't want it to be a missionary organization, because missionary is a thing you do. Missional is a way of life. So medical assistance and missional outreach, because ultimately, and I've heard comments from pastors that it is an outreach and several of the pastors that we're working with are using healthcare as a way to reach into the community where God has called them to serve as an evangelistic tool. And they're seeing people come to Christ as a result of that. So like we're literally bouncing on the bus <laughs> and talking about Mamo and medical assistance and, and missionary, missional, missionary, no missional, organization, no, not organization, outreach. So that's where the name came from. And then the, the short-term goal was just to provide immediate medical support, to, to provide pastors with just really basic supplies that they could use to meet the most, the most basic problems that we knew about. Okay, medical assistance, missional outreach. Mamo, do you get that, guys? So, we know what Mamo means. We know the mission. What has Mamo done so far? Um, we were here in, in July of 2017. We came back in April of 2000. No, we were here in July of 2016. We came back in July of 2000. Sorry. We were here in July of 2016. We came back in April of 2017. And we brought dressing supplies and medicine or things from the states that we couldn't get in Uganda but everything we could get in Uganda, we sourced here. And we brought medical boxes that, to contain the supplies. And we brought essential oils. We brought a manual, a first aid manual. And then we did trainings. We went and visited a handful of schools and the other schools that we couldn't visit, we brought the pastors and, and teachers here to, to Jinja, to the Source of the Nile Hotel, and we had a training. And Ida, the nurse, and a nurse from the US, Emily, help do training and teach them how to use the supplies we were providing and um, answer questions. And then since then, I, I came back in August of 2017 and provided some supplies and came back in January of 2018 and provided supplies. And then in April or May of 2007, 2018 and restocked the kits. But Moving forward, it's like, what, well, what can we do? We know, we know that it's being helpful, but how helpful? We don't know. And are we providing things that are helpful? Or are there things that would be more effective? So I came back in, in May of 2019 to work on an assessment and look at, at what impact. And also because we knew one of the pastors was restocking the kits, Mama Jane at Idome Christian School, we knew that she was restocking the kit and wanted to learn more about what that looked like and to see what other pastors were doing and maybe if we could learn from what Mama Jane was doing and help other pastors. Well, we found out that almost every pastor is restocking their kit in some way or they've connected, partnered with a, a local provider, a local um, clinic or something to help continue the medical support that we started with the med kids. Oh, wow, that is tremendous impact. I don't know how many schools, especially in the countryside, that have a first aid box or the ability to restock it. Because I can't even imagine how long those supplies last. So I see several people here. What is going on? What is this you have here? Another training? This has been incredible. And we had a, a as part of the assessment, my goal was to talk to as many pastors as I could to see, just to learn as much as I could about what was going on. 
And then I realized as I, we spoke to more and more pastors that more pe that more of the most of the pastors were restocking the kits or had some kind of cooperative agreement with a, a close a nearby clinic. And like we need to get everybody together to talk and to see what what's working, what's not, and to see if they have suggestions on how to move forward. So that's what we did today, and the the results were astounding. First, the turnout was amazing, and literally in just a matter of days reached out to the pastors and teachers to see if they could come and a majority of them were able to make it. People traveled for long distances to come and people were so engaged. It was really, really encouraging, really encouraging. And honestly, it, it was almost, um, well, at one point I cried just looking at, at the, this group of people who two years ago I didn't even really know. And now they're, they're friends. And it was such a treat to be able to be all together in the room again and to hear the stories of what people are doing, the impact, to, to hear how many students are being impacted, how many students' lives are being touched and not just students' lives, but to know that, that even communities are receiving benefit from the heart, really from the pastors because we provided a little bit of support and we provided a handful, I mean, really simple and a little bit of supplies, but they've taken what we did and like the, the parable of the talent, somebody mentioned that, they've, they've invested and are expanding the impact. And it's, it just has been incredible to hear the stories. Absolutely incredible to hear the stories. So awesome. It doesn't get better than this. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going for a quick break, and when we return, we're going to join the session and catch some stories. Stick with us on the Double Impact Show. I am Irina. We'll be right back. 